So actually in our last session we made uh, the structural analysis part still we have so usually a structure is defined by five items the geometry actually the geometry is over boundary conditions that supports it's over again the material was well assigned the sections are well assigned the last item to define completely a structure is the load so we'll be interested here in this first part of the this session by the load so we'll have for sure the lead load i will say that this is the self weight and another case of dead load sdl superimposed dead load a third case the live load self sdl live load and uh, fourth case a wind load no in the usually by default when you define uh, the load cases you have by default the self way to assign to the whole structure in the first case of that load case in the self case. So now the self weight of the structure is taken into consideration. We can pass to the SDL case. We have to define at this level or at the office levels the superimposed dead load and the live load case and the same at the roof level. So it's of a common practice to work plane by plane. For each plane having a slab, as we are here in the 3D frame part, we cannot draw a slab, but we can relate these elements, these beams elements by a diaphragm. The diaphragm will uh, will uh, will pro will uh, will uh, so the diaphragm here will uh, will let all the elements of the beams within the same floor to interact between them like if they are related by a slab so the diaphragm will produce the effect of the slab Uh, slab by definition is a horizontal plate so a slab can all the nodes within the same slab can have must must have the same translation along x same translation along y and if the slab rotate all the nodes and beams within the same slab will have the same rotation amount so this is the definition of a rigid diaphragm the diaphragm will be defined by a master node, any node near the middle, and a slave nodes will be the remaining nodes, all, all the nodes. So by this manner, we'll link all the nodes together to a common node, can be any node in the middle or any other node. So now all these beams and nodes, they are linked together like if we had a real slab, we have to define the superimposed dead load according to the project requirement. So it's maybe three kilopascal, three times A or three over A. I don't remember. So the project superimposed dead load of four kilopascal and the roof level will assign for the SDL case. I have to check that we are here in the SDL case. Bar load, planar load, not surfacic. Surfacic, if we had really a slab. No, if we have a diaphragm, we can use the planar load with an intensity along Z minus four kilonewton per meter square kilopascal minus four and minus four. The plane is any 
three nodes must have only one of them non-collinear is the definition of a plane and we have to apply this load to all the elements in this level as dl again as dl case we have to repeat the same for the live load live load value is uh, at the office level 2.5 kilopascal so we'll pass to the live load same nodes as previously selected and apply to all the elements here so this over for this level we are find the self weight the sdn and the live load now for the roof level we we'll select the roof level in our new window we we'll assign in the beginning and the frag the frag master node any node near the middle connected to all the other elements no, the elements of this level are connected connected by a slab or by a virtual slab and this level is loaded with a live load of one and sdl of three kilopascal now in the case of sdl we have points three nodes are three nodes one of them non-collinear only three nodes one of them non-collinear apply to all this is this is the mm -hmm. again minus three forty eight twenty nine fifty one along with that apply to all apply to all so sometimes we have some troubles uh, to be to be sure I suggest to check in the load table that don't have any defined load So for example, if try to check if you have a load on the element 71 to be sure that we didn't define any load. So node 71. Don't have 71 here. So it means uh, there is no any defined load. So I will repeat this step again. Don't know what, why the software is not responding. SDL bar minus three minus three minus three and forty eight thirty two fifty four apply to all it's okay so it's taken into consideration this is for the sdl now for the live load it's minus one same notes and same selection but i will repeat the selection it's okay no have as the L and you have my load. I am not confident. I think that there's something wrong here. I have two loads. I have two loads, two loads. So I will delete this load.
I will delete all the live load case Delete cut. And I, I will repeat I think that something is going wrong So again, live load Minus one, minus one, minus one Apply to All No, it's it seems correct. I have only one rectangular load one one. Previously we had a second line here means that we had two overrighted load. And I will go back so so here we have SDN and the first and second level. And live load must be redefined for the first level because I deleted all the live load. I load here was minus three, I remember two point five, sorry. So live load and use a bar planner load of minus two point five. It seems okay, live load is well defined, SDL is well defined, self weight is taken into consideration as you see the sucker is uh, become darker because the SDL is taken into consideration. If you pass from a second node, the structure is not that is not darker normal color, it means that we don't have a self weight in this case. SDL self weight so the structure become darker it means that the uh, this element self weight is taken into consideration and all the other elements now still have to define the wind load wind load and the crane load The wind load is uh, corresponding to a velocity of 80 mile per hour. So if you look to this, is to this. If you look to this building, uh, what do you think about the critical wind direction? So, if the wind arises along x direction, you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine line of columns resisting this wind. If the wind come in the y direction, so we have only two lines of columns. So we can say that the wind direction is a critical in the y direction and we'll consider that the wind will arise in the y direction uh, you can uh, look to this uh, matter in another uh, in another way of thinking considering all the plan of the building like a column this column has stronger axis x axis and weak axis is y so for this reason the building is weak in the y axis and i will consider that the wind direction is y with a wind velocity of 80 to simply you can go here to wind wind and snow special load press this moving load sorry wind and snow don't have here don't know why it's not allowed to generate the wind automatically so we'll miss this part we'll select the wind manually now we'll pass to the crane load is a crane of 10 uh, 10 10 ton it means 100 kilonewton 100 kilonewton as explained previously it will correspond to a crane a crane like uh, this one so 
So I clean like this one, having two concentrated loads at each end, moving on the crane railway. So if we have a crane capacity of 10 ton or 100 kilonewton, logically we, we will say that five, five, 50 kilonewton on the right and 50 kilonewton on the, on the left. But as, as I explained previously, the attachment of load here, maybe at the middle, maybe at the right, maybe at the left. So for this reason, the reaction of 10 tons, if the position is at the middle, will be 5 and 5. If the position at, on the right will be 10, 0. Or the position of the load is on the left will be 10, 0. So to, to have the envelope case, we'll consider that the 10 load will be the 10 kiloton load will be equal to 10 kilonewton on the right and 10 kilonewton and 10 ton on the left and the 10 ton here 100 kilonewton is with on two points 50 kilonewton and 50 kilonewton 50 and 50. So this is an example of a crane <coughs> and of a crane so again here the position of the point attachment of point may be too close to the right, so it means the load here, if it's equal to 100 kilonewton, will be a, a, will be fully tra transmitted to the supports here, with 50 to the first support and 50 to the second support, and zero at the opposite side. If the crane position is at the middle. We'll, we'll have here half load and half load. If it's at the second end, we'll have here zero load and full load at the second. Uh, so for this reason, we'll consider the 10 ton or 100 kilonewton as equal to 100 to the right and 100. Still, we need the position, the distance between these two concentrated load. I will assume it equal to one meter in my project. And then we'll go to load, special load moving. I will define a new, so moving load by default for the software is, it's a, it's a track or a car load. I will define a new load. So for example, here the, maybe it's a track here by the Ashto code. A truck or a car having two concentrated loads corresponding to the reactions or to the load transmitted by the four wheels of the car. If you select another one, so here it's a truck, six points, a truck, a different geometry of truck, and so on. I will try to consider a crane. So a crane is defined like a car with four points, I need to define a new load. I will say it's my crane, 100 kilonewton. This is my vehicle name, and defined by concentrated force, and concentrated force, force is equal to 100, and sorry, 50, and 50, between them along x direction we have one meter zero to one zero to one and the spacing maybe ten so just for uh, a trial load maybe it's at equal to ten I don't know I have to check in my software what the distance in the vertical direction between the end of the corbel to the end of the corbel. So going back to my structure, x, y, global working plane, anil point here, I'm asking for the x, y view, I have to know what is the distance between my end of corbel to the end of the corbel. have here dimension 9 from this point to this point I have 11.3 meter 
So this is the width of my uh, car or the width of my moving load, my crane load, 11.3 meter. We will need later on to know the path, the path of this crane. I will draw a construction line. I will delete later the path, the center line of the path of the trajectory will be from this middle, the middle of the distance between the beginning and the end of the crane, between the node, will write here the coordinates on my book node, 0 0.3, 6.8, This is the starting position of my crane, and the ending position is 20.02, 6.8, and 7.4. This is the trajectory of my crane from here to here, from the beginning of the hole to the end of the hole. As I said, this was construction line. I will delete them. I can keep the dimension or I can delete as you like. No, we have full information to define the crane load. So again, you want The S, S here is the width of the crane. So width is 11.3. This is the width 11.3. And the X is the distance between the two concentrated loads. Zero to one. I have to write eleven point three two times because it's a width at x equal zero in the red points and the width at x equal eleven point at uh, yes the width at x equal one the two green points. This is it, I think that the crane is well defined. We'll see later. If it's the case, so we'll add this load. It's added now. The case of load is number five. We'll name again crane. 100 kilo newton. The trajectory will be defined by a line. A line going from point 0 0.3, 6.87.4. To twenty point zero two six point eight seven point four zero point three six point eight seven point four to twenty point zero two six point eight seven point four apply Trajectory load direction is along minus Z minus one along Z, so minus 50 along Z. Steps, it's better to increase the step in order to have a better accuracy of calculation. Let's say the moving load will move. Each 0 0.1 meter will have a new result. The software will uh, let the step of the crane each 0 0.1 meter apply so now the red line here it's the center of mass of the trajectory it's the center of mass of the crane which define the trajectory starting from this point 0 0.36.87.4 to this point 20.36.87.4 usually you cannot see the load 
the claim load before the calculation. If you go to the claim, we have we see only the trajectory. You have to go to display load moving load to show the route that the route the trajectory the vehicle and the moving load elements to display correctly the parameters you should generate the calculation model exactly so to see the moving load we have to generate the calculation <coughs> no the moving load is uh, is shown this correspond to the couple of concentrated loads to the left and to the right of the structure. It's, uh, <coughs> it's interesting to know that uh, the moving load have different positions, starting from here. This is the trajectory of the moving load. So like a crane, exactly. Each 0.1 meter is moving, applying a load on the structure, updating the re reactions, the moment, the shear, and so on. Which correspond to the reality of the crane load. You cannot consider that this, this crane load is fixed load. No, uh, we still have to define the wind load. I will check again if I can define it uh, automatically. If not, I will try to define manually. So maybe the step of 0 0.1 meter was too small and the uh, calculation becomes too heavy. Actually, I will keep it later on if the calculation is really too heavy. I suggest to define the, this crane load again uh, using a step of uh, 0 0.4 or 0 0.5 meter. But one meter is too, too big, it's a too big step. Okay, so again, load wind and snow it's not activated so i as i i explained before i am considering that the y direction is the critical one i will apply a wind pressure on this facade and with wind suction on the opposite facade so this is the leeward facade and this is the this is the windward facade and this is the leeward facade to do it simply <coughs> I will extract all the columns of this facade, XZ facade. I will see the YZ deep view. And I will extract all these columns in a new window. I will keep only the columns, so I will make a new selection again. Uh, to know what the corresponding values of load generated by a wind pressure of 80 mile per hour, it's a long procedure, usually taken in tall building, tall building technical elective course. You 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 had a brief uh, explanation about it in your structural analysis one course at the beginning at the beginning of RC structural analysis, uh, RC Hibbler structural analysis book. So it's a matter related to the wind speed, to the category of the building, 
to the elevation, uh, to the position regarding the sea level, to the exposure, to a lot of different criteria, to and by the wind load on the leeward, on the windward and the leeward vessel. Actually, we cannot uh, do this uh, here. I will approximate this wind load as equal to a wind pressure here of 1 kilopascal and 0 0.5 kilopascal on the leeward vessel. So I will apply a wind planner triangular load on this facade, wind load, planner, triangular. So firstly, I will select the plane, node 21 at the support, 28 at the support, and 55 at the top. The load direction is along x, y, or z. It's along y. So we have here to define. So triangular starting from 0, 0, at 20, node 21 we have 0, we have 0, at node 28, and we have full, uh, uh, full load at the top, at 55. We have here at 55, we have 1, along plus y, so 1, plus 1, along y. So this will be the triangular planner load apply to all these elements this is my triangular this is my triangular uh, planner load applied to the windward facade corresponding to a wind pressure of one kilopascal I have to repeat the same for the leeward facade The wind. So now we select the opposite facade. The leeward facade. Usually the leeward facade load is considered as rectangular load, not a triangular load. Again, in the window, we'll keep only the columns. We'll consider that the wind will be applied only to the columns. It's an assumption to make. Some users are proceeding like this. Some ones will apply the loads to the columns and to the beams. Personally, I prefer this method because regardless, the load applied to the columns will be transmitted by continuity to the slabs. So as mentioned before, it will be uh, now a planner load starting with node 1, node 10, and node 37 along Y but ending 0 0.5 0 0.5 for the first node for the second node and for the third node as i said because it's usually a rectangular load on the leeward facet 05 05 05 for the first second and third node along plus one it's a suction it's not a pressure load it's a suction load so pulling outward. This is my load. So actually we have defined all the loads. The pressure on the windward, pressure, and the suction on the leeward. And the wind was assigned to the weak direction of the building, the direction Y. So self, SDL, live, wind, crane, crane plus, crane minus will say Y 
we'll say later why you have crane plus and crane minus. I will save. Now I will test with the second task, which is the design. To simply, we have to design the columns, as mentioned previously, the beams, the slabs, the core build, and so on. To design, I will start by the simple element to design the, the core build. We need to know the shear force. We can show now the diagram for bars. FZ. At the ultimate, for sure the design will be done at the ultimate load case. So we have to define the load combinations. We need an ultimate. Where all the loads will be added with 1.2 for that, 1.6 for the moving, for the life, 1 for wind, and 1 for the moving. The moving load is considered like a live load. And we'll define a new combination, service state. With 1 for all. Have to add only the load cases, not the load combination. So actually, we have here ultimate and service. We have to update the results, the calculations. Now the shear force diagram, as usually, will be labeled, differentiate, and filled. At the ultimate state, so this is my core wheel. can extract the core wheels in a separate window. Or only the columns here in a separate window, as you like. So these are my shear force diagrams for the corbels with a value here of 7.9. The value here is different. The value here is different. Why it's different each time? Because actually the, the we have a, a, a moving load. So these are the values of the shear corresponding to this position of moving load. If you move this position, the values will be different. So if you change the position, the value will be different. Each time the position is different, each time the results are different. So for this reason, you cannot take the results for the ultimate case, but we have to take the result for the ultimate plus or minus the same plus and minus the plus uh, or minus give you for each point for each point the maximum shear and the minimum shear regardless regardless the position of the moving loop so now I have the diagrams for all the elements i am interested only by the corbels i will extract again the corbels add on Usually, we may we must have same results for the corbels on the left part and on the right part due to the symmetry. I have to check 
um, it might be it may be little different because the wind load is not symmetrical but I th I believe that the wind load is not affecting the shear of the cordless so again cannot refer to the ultimate because this ultimate correspond to a specific position of the moving load we have to refer to the envelope case ultimate plus or minus as shown here so the values are don't have all the values I have to ask for all so around 160 160 don't have the value here, it must be similar, 161, 167, 161, 161. So the Corbel's shear value to take into consideration to design them later is 167.8 or 170 kilonewton. Okay, so this is for the column, this is for the Corbel's, now to design them, you can go to a specific software like RCM ACI Builder so here we have the Corvel F prime C, if it's 35, it's 35. You have to take a, an arbitrary, uh, you have a trial dimensions of the corbel height, corbel breadth B. What does it mean, corbel breadth B? B is the width, so width here is 500. Cover to center, K60, bearing loaded area LP. 300 okay take it as is width 250 the face clearance you want it to okay we may change them if you want vd v due to dead load alone and due to live load alone so if the value is 167 at ultimate cannot know the dead alone and live load alone unless you have don't have a case of load involving self and dead load so you have to you, if you need you need it you have to define in the same case uh, self you have to add the sdl at the same load case to have the value of dead load alone and live load alone and as mentioned here as you see here the live load case doesn't have don't have any live load here live load at the corbels is corresponding to the crane 100 ultimate sorry 100 is uh, live load alone so it means due to the as due to, due to the dead load is around 70 can uh, take here 100 due to live load and 70 here T usually is 160, so 170 times 0 0.2, we have 34 or 35, 20% of the ultimate. Diameter of the bar, maybe 20. Number of stirrups row, number of legs per step. Let's try this to calculate. Let's see. The check up is okay. Primary 1000, 4, 5, 20. Shear 184, four rows of two legs by eight. For more information, consult the reports. Corbel 
design it seems correct working correctly you have here the full report of your core build and the checkups I have here a summary of the code uh, equations maybe so I have three pages page two and the calculations can consult them and page three you have the enforcement details you can print on PDF to keep it and to use it in your project report as annex Mm -hmm. don't have the option to to print as PDF so you will fix it okay so this is for the Corbin Corbel is well designed, hopefully. Now, if you are interested by the design of columns, you can just extract the column. Which one is critical? Usually having the large you will not design different reinforcement for the different for the different elements in the same family of columns. So, for example, the four columns at the four corners here will check their moment diagram and axial force in order to figure out which one is critical, is the most critical. One. three and four okay so these are the four columns fx the axial diagram my the moment so for fx which one is the critical one and not see the two diagram at the same time. So this one is a heavier one, maximum XL 533, and maximum moment is 30 for this one. This for the ultimate, as I explained before, we have to mention to design at the envelope, so ultimate plus, repeat again. Maximum moment is 129 here. And maximum axial is here. So I believe that this one, axial, this one is close to this one, but the moment here is greater. I believe that this column or this one will be the critical. The moment is higher. So this, this, I, I think. So it's, you have to check the design of this one, this one, this one, and this one, and to see which, which one will have the higher amount of reinforcement. Why I believe, checking this diagram, that this column will be the critical one. So to simply, you have to select it and to go to the RC element design. <coughs> then you will be able to see the detailed reinforcement
Yes, my colon, second one. Sixty one thirty, the first column to five point four plus the beam here and the second one. I have to run the calculation for the enforcement. the axial force diagram of my column the moment and axial are corresponding for the different combination are inside the diagram it means that the design is safe is the column reinforcement Uh, this is the calculation not the report can export if you want and you can generate the drawings AutoCAD drawings So this is the drawing of this column. We have eight five thirty six for the main one two three four eight still up sixteen five thirteen grade three hundred. This is the this is the first this is the first steel ups and this is the second one. We have a not annotation one, two, three, four, five. Each bar with the corresponding shape is shown here. The bar one is straight. And bar two is straight again. Is the framing steel for the for the column. Bar three is a closed stirrups with the shape corresponding here, and bar four closed stirrups. Three and four, three and four. So three, it's maybe like this, and four like this. And bar five, it's the internal leg, internal leg of stirrups. This is the part of five. Uh, this is the number of, this is the elevation. 16 stirrups, 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. 16. This is the column section, this is the material property of C. We'll check this information now. This is the quantity of concrete, quantity of formal, quantity of steel, cover, scale, and so on. I missed a part here, was related to the reinforcement pattern. You can uh, let the software select any reinforcement and you can specify the calculation options. So the concrete is C35. C35. Strange must be 35 exactly okay you can keep 32 no uh, aggregate size unit weight general this for the okay launch reinforcement you can keep all the bars or you can select only 525 for the main bars 420 or 520 or 550 as you like I will keep only 525 and transfer enforcement. I will keep only 510. Okay. 
and the same for the reinforcement pattern so corner bar transverse you can select this type of tire reinforcement or this type or this type or any one as you like for the corresponding sections most important one is the shape of the main bar shape is straight is this the case of the columns for the stirrups you can select this shape with with bending bent out and to the outer or to the inner it's better to select this one it's uh, select, better to select a closed stirrups like this one okay and now we can repeat the calculation and you will you'll see the drawings and you, the drawing when once you, i will repeat so the generated drawing once we have the drawings we can you, you can export them to autocad to open them in autocad to edit them in order to let the text more clear to add your uh, names in the frame to check uh, the printing is good to select the good colors for the elements to, to do everything you want to do so this file must be safe drawing in different format dxf so column as i said now this drawing can be opened using autocad we will add here that the good uh, name of the column your name project name you have here all the quantities you you Usually the text here is overwritten. You have to separate the text in order to be clear. So you'll edit this drawing in AutoCAD. Now it's over for the column. It's over for the column design. You can repeat the same for the beams. For the beams, for any beams here. You, again you, you select a beam you, you go here select all the cases select the bar diameter the stirrups and so on and related drawings export to autocad and so on uh, this is for the columns the beam the rc corval still you have to select a specific type of the slab here so you can you use here a drop beam drop beam drop beam and select a one-way slab it's more likely to be a one-way but uh, here now we have a beam with a span of around of around the uh, span here it's around 12 meter 12 over 16 you will have a depth of so 12,000 over 16 you have uh, that's around 750 750 uh, it may pass or not but uh, my experience is that this beam must have a depth around one meter you have to edit a new section to uh, create a new section for the beam with a depth of one meter to run the calculation again and to design these beams check if the serviceability is adequate so let's say so if you take i will not change the section actually but i will take this beam maybe this one is more critical it's an internal beam it will carry a load from both sides you will see that uh, the deflection will not be adequate because it's too shallow with a depth only of 50 centimeter this my beam 50 centimeter of depth run the calculation i will not change the options actually i'm running out of time deflection doesn't satisfy code requirements at safety factor of 0 0.84 so you have to increase the depth till the checkup will be satisfied in the beam diagrams you can see the deflection can see the deflection total deflection which means long-term deflection you will see here the diagram you have a deflection of 
60.8. So, and the uh, allowable one is 60, 60 so, uh, one by default is L over 240. So, according to your structure, it may be L over 240, L over 360, or L over 480. You have to revise your RC2 course at that first chapter in order to know the limit here. We'll specify the limit. Maybe L over 240. And the limit will be, so 12 meter. 12 meter over 240 is 50. And your deflection is 61. So this is a ratio of 0 0.84. So for this reason, as suggested, you have to change the column section, the beam section to increase the depth till this checkup will be satisfied. Actually, uh, if it will be satisfied, you will uh, continue, you will edit the drawings, generate the drawings, export them to AutoCAD, edit them, and so on. So beams is over, columns is over, uh, corbel is over. Still have to design the slab, so you can design it manually, or if you like any software like Safe, Stud, or any one, you will design this one-way slabs. It's clear that they are one way. It can be one way ribbed or one way solid. And here you can again select uh, design a two-way slab or select a one-way rib slab everywhere as, as you like. This is all for this project. Hope you, you are enjoying. Hope you will have fun. And uh, good luck for all. Thank you.